Hello guys, how's it going? So, today's video is a video that I've been meaning to get around to make for a little while. Uh, it's a video that a few of you have actually requested and it's taken me a while to get around to doing it because I simply have not had much time on my hands lately. Um, basically, today's video is my response to the Gamer Talk episode with DSP. The video was uploaded a while ago now, over a week ago. Uh, it's actually a two-part video. Both videos are an hour each. Uh, DSP features through the whole of the first video he's interviewed, and he's interviewed for about a third of the second video. So, you know, you're looking at over an hour's worth of DSP stuff for me to watch and sift through and give my opinion on. And I've not had time to sit down for that amount of time for, I've actually watched it in chunks and I've like made notes. Um, it's a lot, of, a lot of footage to sift through. Uh, but, you know, I'm flattered that everyone has been sent, loads of people sent me the video, loads of people asked me for my opinion on it and if I was going to make a video about it. Um, at first I wasn't going to, but uh, then with, with everyone asking I thought, well I will, and then it's just taken a while. But here it is now anyway, you know, I got to it eventually. And like I said, I'm flattered that so many people actually want to hear my opinion on the whole DSP situation um, despite the fact that I've already made several videos on him and people still want to know what I think so here we go um, first of all uh, it has to be said uh, you know thumbs up to DSP it, the fact that he did the interview is in my opinion totally out of character he he left his comfort zone and he uh, from what I understand he did say to um, the people that interviewed him, which was um, sorry, Kane bringing the pain and uh, his friend Anthony, they're the ones that conducted the interview. And I want to say that they did a very good job with it. They did a good job to get Phil on the uh, stream. And to be honest, I, th I would have thought with some of the questions that he would have hung up and like stormed off or whatever. So fair play to them. They did the interview very well. Uh, a plus on their part, in my opinion. And I, I was sent a video. Uh, a couple of weeks back, which was the video saying, "Oh, we're going to be getting Phil on Gamer Talk, or we're prob most likely going to get him on Gamer Talk. Post your questions here." And I'll be honest, at the time I was like, "I'm not posting the question on there. There's no point. Phil will not do this." And you know, I was proven wrong. He did it. They got him to do it. And fair play. Uh, as I was saying, the, the only thing that I, I've heard—I don't know how true this is—I've just heard that he did say that he would not discuss Evil AJ, um, which I think is a bit of a cop-out when you, you know, he's, he's done well to go into that situation, the unknown, and talk about, well, he didn't know what was going to be thrown at him, but he went in with a stipulation that he would not talk about Evil AJ, which sort of like blocks out a whole category. I mean, he should have been made to uh, justify his statements about how anyone who makes... Uh, videos disrespecting me is mentally ill, he should have had to answer that, but I suppose he probably doesn't have an answer for it, so, you know, he, should, he went in there going, well, I'm not answering any of that shit, which, whatever, he, he went there anyway, so got to give him some respect. Now, uh, oh, by the way, I'll leave links below to the two videos from Kane Bringing the Pain, so that if you haven't watched it, I'd urge you to go watch it. Um, it's, it is good. They did a very good job doing the interview, and uh, yeah. So before I go into um, my thoughts on what he said and how I thought he'd uh, dealt with the interview, um, there's obviously I've made like three rant videos on DSP already, but there's one that I, I would urge you to watch after watching this video, and yeah, it is a bit of self-promotion, but there's a reason why I particularly want to sort of like say to anyone who hasn't watched this video, my video, um, DSP fans are factually wrong. If you've not watched it, I'd urge you to go watch it after this because, well, you'll see why once I've finished like, giving my thoughts on this as to, uh, as to why I think it's relevant to watch that. So, overall, DSP, how do I think he came across in the interview? I think he came across the same. He, he hasn't changed a bit. He took the opportunity, he turned up to do this interview with like, not knowing what was put in front of him. You know, he had the balls to do that, and he was given a platform whereby he could have changed his image. He could have come out and said, look, 
I know I've been a dick, I know what I've done here, here, here is wrong, and I apologise, I just want to get back on track, and you know, turned it around, it, he could have come out, so many people would have gained respect for him, and you know, it, it would have had a positive effect on his channel and him, and people would go back, you know, it would increase his views, it would increase um, his income, it, it would put everything that he wants, like, it would start things rolling in the right direction again. But no, he didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. He, he's he's incapable of sort of admitting wrong. I mean, he did to some extent say, oh, I know sometimes I can uh, go a bit overboard, blah, 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 that sort of thing. But he never sort of at any point said, yes, that was wrong, regardless of what was thrown in front of him. Now, the interview contained him where he was moaning, he was contradicting dicting previous statements that he's made and it was full of hypocrisy classic DSP all over uh, obviously Kane bring the pain and Anthony they they've got to they can't grill him and attack him or whatever because he could leave at any point and I believe he would have and also you know if they want him to come back they can't treat him completely like shit so I think they did a good job sort of asking harsh questions but doing it in a way that he doesn't feel like he's being attacked he was comfortable to stay and whatever. Uh, fair play to them for doing that. I would have done it so differently. I don't think he would have lasted past question one. To be honest, I don't think I'd let him get an answer in. Um, <laughs> he'd just be going, okay, okay. Uh, I'd just be like going, shouting facts at him that he wouldn't be able to come back at. Um, but, you know, the way they did it was obviously much, much better. Um, I thought that some of the questions, they could have had harsher questions, but, I mean, they work with what they got, and like I said, they don't want to scare DSP off. So, to talk about uh, some of the things that DSP said and like within uh, the video, he but the whole um, point of why do you treat your fans like shit? Why do you talk to them, you know, like like they're garbage and things like that? And he, the, the Minecraft whole Twitter incident was brought up, which is why I was advising people go watch my DSP fans are factually wrong video because I discuss the whole tweets and all the tweets are on there from that whole um, sort of like crazy rant that DSP went on about how Minecraft is repetitive crap I think he called it and that anyone who doesn't like Earthbound and classic games um, are idiots pretty much. He, he says that Twitter is not a good place for him to have an intelligent conversation and things get misconstrued. Now, first of all, take away, Twitter's not a place for him to have an intelligent conversation. Is he capable of having an intelligent conversation? Really? I mean, I know you're only allowed 140 characters, but how many characters is, you're an idiot? It's not that many, that's his standard edit-paced response. I mean, YouTube has 500 characters, I've never seen him reply to anyone in an intelligent manner um, on YouTube when they give him criticism. So that's a load of bullshit right there, oh, 140 characters. Oh, I, I meant to say something completely different. Because I've only got 140 characters, it's come across as different. Well, if you go back to my DSP fa fans are factually wrong <laughs> video, t tell me how the character limitation has made it so that those tweets come across differently. It, it hasn't. Saying that if you think that repetitive craft like Minecraft is better than Earthbound, you are factually wrong. How has a character limitation made that come across? How could more characters have made him go into more detail about that? He's telling people that if you like Minecraft better than Earthbound, you are factually wrong. No, it's in a matter of opinion. He's saying, my opinion is right, and if you don't agree with it, you are factually wrong. Go watch that video. <laughs> go watch that video and read through those tweets and see exactly how... And bear in mind, as you're reading them, go... Right, DSP did not mean to say all these things, he had to say them because of character limitations. It's a load of bullshit. But that was his answer he gave, and he's very clever, ducking and diving around all the things, not answering properly. Um, also, moaning, he was... Remember, right, this guy, he plays video games for a living. So... And it's always boggled my mind that he refers to it as work. Oh yeah, it's my job, work. Oh, I put in a lot of work. Look, I'm sorry.
playing computer games all day is never going to be work. Awesome that you've got the job. Brilliant. Make the most of it. Be grateful that you've got there. Your fans have put you there. Be grateful. Don't moan about work. I have a job. I go out and work. When I come home, if I want to moan about it, yeah, I've actually been out and I've worked. Most of your viewers have jobs. And, well, mo not your fanboys because they're like 12. And, but, um, yeah, most of your, like, sensible viewers have jobs. They go out and work. And then they come back, you know, watching your videos or whatever, and you're moaning about your work. Oh, God, I, my, my work, my job is so hard. He talks about how, um, he goes back to talk about direct capture and stuff, and he says, oh, I, I hate wearing head, headsets, headphones, whatever. I hate wearing them, but now I have to wear them every day for work. Oh, my God, poor you. Shit. Oh, I feel so bad for him. He has to wear headphones every day at work. That must be really fucking tough. God, I wish my job... I'm so glad my job's not as hard as his. And uh, he was talking about, like, direct capture again, and he was... how... Because they said, why did you say, oh, yeah, I might look into doing direct capture somewhere down the line, and then he did it a few days later, and everyone's saying, you know, why did you sort of, like, rant and rave about how you weren't going to do it for ages, then you said you were going to do it eventually, and then you just did it. And he said, well, I just... Find that the best way to transition into a big change is just to fucking do it. Well, if that's the case, and he said also in that same sort of sentence, I've been planning on doing it for a while. A while. So if you're planning on doing it for a while, then you didn't just jump in and do it. You did wait. So what would have... Been, you see what I mean? It's, he's gone back on himself in the same sentence, almost. I, I don't... Like I said, there needs to be... I think Panda Lee should be there and sort of just like nudge him every time he's like hey no don't say that don't say that you're coming across as a moron but then she'd just be nudging him constantly so and then you know how does Panda Lee know how to spot a moron you know she's um no I'm sorry I'm not going to go into a big rant about Panda Lee maybe another video um yeah so he continues to moan about his job and how oh it's so hard and uh he says about now he's switched to direct capture there's all wires across my uh, living room, and when my parents come around, they say, that's a fire hazard. Oh, fucking... Oh, oh, so... Huh? Who gives a shit? His parents come around and go, this is a fire hazard. Oh my god, now he's risking his life, his life to, to bring us this entertainment. All because we wanted direct capture. Oh, now he's now his life's on the line. But he lives in a two-bedroom condo, so he'll be able to smell the smoke. Don't worry, guys. He'll know if there's a fire. <laughs> Fucking idiot. I'm surprised he didn't turn around to his parents when they said, Oh, son, your uh, living room is a fire hazard. I'm surprised he didn't turn around and say to him, You're an idiot! Because they offered him some constructive criticism. Like, oh, you're, maybe you should move these wires. Oh, you're a fucking idiot. And, uh, yeah, so... Oh, his jobs, he moaned about his job, uh, the whole Minecraft, oh, oh it's fucking because of Twitter and it's restrictive fucking uh, characters. Um, what else does he go on to talk about? Uh, th th this next bit is, is the, the most stunning bit of hi hypocri hypocrisy ever. Uh, but then DSP is, he's not the king of hate, he's the king of hypocrisy, that's what he should be called. He says, and I've got it written down here because I want to make sure, he basically says... I play games to enjoy games. I don't play games for popularity's sake. It's not something that I like, he says. Um, he likes to play games for gaming's sake. He, said, I actually said, he plays games because he enjoys them and not because he wants to do it to make money. Making money was never his intention, it just happened by chance. Right, I would agree to the extent that, yeah, when he started, he wasn't making money, he just did it, it was a hobby, why he had his other job, whatever. And then, yeah, it happened by chance, he had the opportunity to make money off his videos, and he did it. Fair enough, not hating on him for that. But, it has now evolved into the point where he is making videos for money. And going back to my DSP, fans are factually wrong video, that is proven. He's moaning about not getting enough views on his Earthbound playthrough, which in turn is not giving him enough money. So he's saying that he, he hates people that play um, play games to make money. He plays games for gaming's sake. So you're telling me that if tomorrow that you were no longer allowed to make money on your gaming videos and you know you had to go back and get another job, would you continue with your channel 
making gaming videos for free. Because I, hand on heart, don't believe you would. I honestly do not believe for one second you would. You'd make loads of videos moaning about how you can't make money anymore. I mean, look at how he refused to play Nintendo videos when it looked like um, Nintendo... Oh, you can no longer make money off Nintendo videos. What, why should I fucking play um, Nintendo games? And again, a, video, a good video to uh, watch for that is my, um, from my friend Mr. Brock Hines called DSP vs. Nintendo. I'll put a link to that as well. I've, I've promoted that video before. But yeah, all this, so moaning about not getting enough views and not enough money for him is Earthbound playthrough. And, mo you know, not being able to play Nintendo games because you can't make money off of them is more proof, is, you know, all the proof you need to show that he does play games for money now. Maybe he didn't start off like that, but he does now. So, for him to turn around and say, oh yeah, um, I, I, do, I play games because I enjoy them, I, not playing them for popularity's sakes, is bollocks. And for him to come out and say that, he, he's massively contradicting himself with the Earthbound views tweet and his whole I'm not playing Nintendo games where, where, where anymore bullshit. Right, so, the final thing I want to say is if you go onto the second video of um, this uh, Gamer Talk Live, DSP's um, on it for, he's not on it for the whole video, like I say, he's on it the second video for about a third of it. If you go in about, uh, I've written down the time, it's about 17 minutes 20 seconds in. Kane bringing the pain brings up a comment that he left to DSP a couple of months back, or I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was regarding. I mean, you should go watch the video because I'm, I'm not going to tell you exactly the ins and outs of it. He basically pointed out a bit of hypocrisy on DSP's part, and the comment was two lines. It wasn't disrespectful. He just time stamped the video at a certain time and said, This is um, very hypocritical. And gave a little reason. And then DSP came back at him. With a massive paragraph of words. He's, but he's only got 500 characters bearing in mind. So he probably didn't have enough characters to get across what he actually wanted to say. But in the end he tells him to go and die. Which explained to me how the fuck that is. Dealing with criticism in any sort of intelligent manner. And explained to me how any sort of character limitation would prevent him from from having to, you know make him have to write something like that it makes no fucking sense so in all to sum up the whole thing it was done well you know fair play to uh, Kane bring the pain and his friend Anthony very sorry I don't I'm not sure what Anthony's YouTube username is um, interview was very well done Phil on the other hand he dealt with it like shit he could have used it to turn the whole thing around and he didn't. He just came out and he was he was in what the mode he was in was Phil Classic. He classic Phil. It was uh, I just spat a bit there. <laughs> classic Phil. He just hip you know, it's like, oh yeah, you want you want DSP to be interviewed on your show? Fine, I'll bring all the classic packages. Hypocrisy, moaning, contradictions, you get it all, okay? And that's pretty much what we got from that interview. I would like to see Phil do uh, an interview or a debate even, but with people like, I think it would be good if like say myself, uh, Mr. Brock Hines and Evil AJ were able to put together some questions and then maybe I could interview Phil and uh, sort of qu question him a little bit if Phil was ever willing to do that. I think that would be quite interesting, but again, I don't think that's the sort of thing where he, he would definitely not do so, but that would be very interesting. But anyway, yeah, that's my take on it. Sorry it took so long for me to get it out there. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think, if you agree. Maybe maybe he's changed some people's opinions around on him, but I don't see how that's possible, because he's just... Other than the fact that he, he was willing to do the interview, there's nothing good that came out of it for him, from his perspective. Um, so, yeah, what more can you say? DSP is acting like DSP. Big shocker. Same as usual, business as usual, you know, oh, I treat my fans like shit, why the hell am I losing views and money? <sighs> Who knows, Phil? Who knows? God, pe people be crazy. <sighs> Alright, guys, thank you very much for watching, and um, I shall see you next time. Have a terrific day. <laughs>